Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Leslie Rankin, and I'm a rheumatologist at Atrium Health at South Park Rheumatology. And so I'm going to be talking today about clinical trials in lupus. And I just want to thank Jenny Prince and the Lucas Foundation for asking me to do this talk today. I do have a disclosure. I am the primary investigator for an Amgen lupus clinical trial. So the objectives of my talk today are Number one, familiarize oneself with clinical trials. Number two, understand the importance of clinical trials, especially how they relate to lupus patients. And lastly, to learn how to access clinical trials. So what is a clinical trial? So at the heart of it, a clinical trial is a research study to find an answer to a specific question. And that may be, does an older medicine work for a specific disease? Or is a new medicine gonna work for the disease we think that it might work for? And we may even look at different doses to see if a certain dose works better than another dose. And then clinical trials also look to say, hey, what kind of side effects um, does a given medication have? And not only do we look at medications in clinical trials, we also can look at medical devices. And so um, this is particularly um, something that we see in um, cardiovascular or neurologic studies. And so it, it can look at medications or it can look at devices. And the people who join clinical trials, it's always voluntary. So it's, it's something that you can volunteer to do um, if, if you qualify. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. It's also a safe way to improve health and find new treatments that work for various different diseases. And some of you all may have been in a clinical trial yourself or know family members who have been in one, or maybe you're just curious about it. So hopefully um, this talk can help with that. So are clinical trials safe? And I think this question comes up quite a bit. Um, I, I do wanna reassure everybody that every clinical trial, whether we're looking at a new medication or an, an older medication to see if it works for a, a different disease or looking at a medical device, um, the risk and benefits of that have to be explained to every volunteer um, to make sure that everybody understands and feels comfortable with it. Also, the FDA has very strict regulations and guidelines for research to protect um, participants from any unreasonable risk. And so, um, again, some, something that we take very seriously. And every site where a clinical trial is conducted, it has to be inspected to make sure that it can do all the FDA requires to keep patients as safe as possible. And so if somebody's having um, a clinical trial come to their office um, and they're gonna run the trial, um, you know, we have the site um, regulators come prior to even starting the clinical trial to make sure everything is set up and, and safe. And then they come and inspect the site multiple times throughout the year to make sure that everything is going in a perfect way that they want it to go. Each site where a clinical trial is conducted has to be inspected, um, like I mentioned, and this can happen multiple times and will happen multiple times um, throughout the year. And, and it's important to note that you can stop being in a clinical trial at any time. So if you don't feel comfortable or you feel like, hey, this isn't right for me, you can stop doing it. So safety measures. So some of y'all may have heard of a protocol and basically that's an explanation of what is supposed to happen down um, to every last bullet point whenever we do a clinical trial. And when we have the regulators come and inspect to make sure that everything is followed to a T, that's what they're looking for, to make sure that everything is going exactly the way that they want to in, in the protocol. So what we do is we, the, we study the protocol very carefully and we make sure that everything's good to go before we even start the study. And so things in the protocol are visit timing with the research team. So how many times will you come in to be examined and get blood work done and the medication dosing schedule or device checks? and side effect reporting. So all these things are recorded and everything is followed very closely. And the research team receives ongoing training 
from um, the sponsor or the device or drug company to make sure that we know everything possible um, about the medication or the device. So where are clinical trials done? So I know in Charlotte, a lot of clinical trials are done at various doctor's offices or hospitals. And so here in North Carolina, you know, we have Duke, we have UNC, we have Wake Forest. You know, I know Atrium Health where I am does a fair amount of clinical trials, but sometimes even federal research sites like the NIH, and there are um, other government-based organizations that do clinical trials. So they're, you know, they're always um, regulated by the government, um, all the same. So what diseases are studied in clinical trials? Well, of course, lupus, because this is a talk for the Lupus Foundation, and I want to focus on that. But really, almost any disease can be studied. Um, especially, you'll see um, a lot of common diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes, diabetes and heart disease. Um, but really, any, any disease that you can think of, I'm sure you can find a clinical trial where they're studying new medications. So why do we particularly need um, lupus studies and more people to be involved? Well, we know that lupus is a rare disease. We know that it affects more women than men. Uh, about nine times more women than men are affected by lupus. And when men are affected, it's often fairly severe. And it's interesting because over the last few years, you know, we've had a few more medications approved for lupus, but compared to other diseases like diabetes and high blood pressure, you know, with lupus, we just don't have um, comparatively um, as many medications used to treat the disease. And so there, although there have been a few more medications approved over the last couple of years, if you look at the number of people in the clinical trials, um, it seems like it is more um, like depending on where the, the study is run. So there was actually a recent study that was done in Asia. So you have more Asians in the trials, but I know here in the US, we tend to have more um, Caucasian patients who join clinical trials than um, people of color. And that's important because we know that lupus affects people of color more severely and more often um, than people who are Caucasian. And so when we're wanting to know if a medication works in studies, we want to know, is it going to affect the majority of our population? So we can say, hey, um, we know that this medication works um, very similarly in people um, just like you. And so that, that's why it's important that we want people from a variety of backgrounds to join clinical trials so we know if the medications um, are going to work or going to help. Because it's important that we find new and better medications to treat lupus because um, as much as we, you know, use all the medications that we can, you know, sometimes people are still having flare-ups and their disease is not under great control. So we, we want to do even better as a rheumatology community. And, you know, with lupus, I mean, you know, you, you yourself, you know, know that, you know, you or your friends may have um, different ways that lupus affects your body. So some people have more kidney disease, some people have more rash or joint disease. Um, some people have central nervous system involvement. So everybody's a little bit different. And so we like to know, will this medication help with kidney disease or does it help more with joint pain and rash? And so that, that, those are things we like to study in clinical trials. And, you know, joining a clinical trial and especially for lupus help us, helps us again to just understand um, how the new medications are gonna work, like I said before. So how would you yourself or I benefit from being in a clinical trial in general? Well, you have access to a medication that may help to improve your symptoms. And most commonly, the medication will be free to you. And so I know a lot of um, newer medications, you, you have to go through all the prior authorizations for insurance. And, you know, sometimes you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get things approved. But in a clinical trial, the medications is provided free of charge. And um, so that can be very helpful. And it, will, it can help advance treatments for patients who come after, after you for years to come. So who can get into a clinical trial for lupus? Well, generally, 
um, so it's going to be pe it's going to be people who are still having flare-ups. So if your disease is completely well controlled and has been for many many years, you may not qualify to be entered because we we're looking to see if people with flare-ups are getting better and what kind of things get better. Um, but you must have a lupus diagnosis, and this has to be done by a rheumatologist and to enter into certain clinical trials, you know, your rheumatologist will look at, at your baseline blood work and disease activity to see if you meet criteria to be in a specific study. So some of the things your rheumatologist may look for, are you having ongoing issues with lupus rashes or ongoing arthritis with joint pain and swelling? Are your kidneys affected by lupus and is that getting better or getting worse? And also um, other things we, to think about if you're pregnant, may not be able to get into a clinical trial just in case, because a lot of the medicines may be new and we don't know if it, it would affect the unborn baby. So just something to ask and, and think about. And um, I, will, I, will, I do wanna mention that if, if your disease is flaring and you're interested in a clinical trial, usually, not always, but most of the time, the new medication that we're studying will be added on to your baseline medication. So it will just most of the time be a new medicine and that will be added on, but that's something that you'll wanna ask if you're considering um, joining a trial. So, but all that will be explained to you if you're considering doing that. So what's the process? And so you would meet with your doctor who would say, hey, you know, I think you might be a, a candidate to join um, a clinical trial. And then you may be able to, then the doctor would refer you to the research team to kind of dig into that a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And when you meet with the research team, um, you would learn all about the medication or um, it with other diseases, devices being studies, um, how the medication, you know, would benefit you, what we think is, you know, the uh, the reason for the medication being studied, how we think it'll help you, and then any risk, any side effects that we know may be affected um, with the medication. And so all that will be explained and you can make a decision if you feel like that's something you wanna do. Also, you'll learn how often you'll have to come to the doctor's visit to get blood work or have a physical exam um, by the study team to, to, so they can document, hey, is your rash getting better? Is your arthritis getting better? Are your urine studies getting better? Also, you'll learn about any costs um, to you, but I will say like um, some studies will actually pay you um, for your time um, for being in this study. So it's something to definitely ask about. And if it's something that you decide you wanna volunteer for, remember it's voluntary and you can leave at any time. If you feel comfortable joining, um, they'll have you sign a consent form and that kind of gets the ball rolling. And I will say some clinical trials last a year, some last several years. So that's um, also something that, that you'll want to know about. And I did want to mention, because this question often comes up, is there a chance that you could get a placebo or a sugar pill? And, and the answer is yes, because if we're looking to see if a medication works, we need to compare it to somebody who's not getting the medication. And so um, a placebo looks like the trial medication. So it may be a pill, or um, if you're getting an infusion, it may just be saline. And so it's something to ask if you're joining a clinical trial, is there a chance that you could get the placebo? And what is the percentage of chance you'll get the placebo? Because, you know, the, the purpose of the trial is to say, is this medication working or is it, or is it not working? And most of the time, the doctor who's, who's your, um, um, like rheumatologist, or if you're in another um, clinical trial for another disease, most of the time the doctor um, and the patient don't know who's getting the study medication or the placebo. So no one's um, biased in their exam or, or, and when we check the labs, we can really see a difference. And that's the purpose to say, does this medicine really work? Usually you'll know after the trial concludes, 
Now, let's say there, there's a side effect um, of the medication and we really need to know if somebody's getting the study medication or not. We, we call that being unblinded, um, meaning that we can figure out um, if you're getting the study drug or not. But most of the time we wait and get that information after the trial is over. But like I said, all these questions should be answered and, and you're, you should be comfortable with the answers um, to see if the study is right for you. So where, where can you find clinical trials um, that are being conducted for lupus or any other disease for that matter? Um, clinicaltrials.gov has a very um, large list of clinical trials. And when you log on to the website, um, you can pick the disease you're interested in and even the region. So a map pops up and you can click on that map and it will show you different studies and where they're being located. And so it's, it's a really handy tool and there's an exhaustive list and it talks about the different molecules or different medications that are being studied. FDA also has a website. If you go to the FDA and you do a tr clinical trial search, you'll be able to come up um, with answers to that question as well. And also the Lupus Foundation. And I know Lupus Foundation in North Carolina um, keeps a list of all the clinical trials for lupus that they know about. And so if you're in Charlotte and you're interested, um, we should be able to get you um, a list of clinical trials um, as long as we know about them and maybe what doctor's office is doing them or what university. And also ask your rheumatologist. I mean, your rheumatologist may conduct clinical trials and if they don't, they may know somebody in the community because the rheumatology community is very small. So most rheumatologists know all of the rheumatologists in their, in their area. And so um, your rheumatologist may be able to say, hey, Dr. So-and-so is, is doing a trial. You may want to reach out to them. Another thing, if you see a particular rheumatologist and they don't offer any clinical trials and it's something that you're interested in doing, um, you can reach out um, to um, the other practice um, and get the information how to contact them because you can be involved in clinical trials at other offices, but you would just have to transfer your care to that other rheumatologist for the length of the trial um, just to make sure that everything is being followed. Of course, your other rheumatologist, you know, will know what's going on, but um, you usually have to transfer your care for that one, that the length of the study period. And then once the trial is completed, you can go back Back to your regular rheumatologist. So um, that's definitely something um, that can happen. And, as, and if you do join a clinical trial that's somewhere other than your primary rheumatologist office or university, please let your regular rheumatologist know because they may not want to adjust any medications while you're in the clinical trial because some of the trials have, have very strict guidelines on how to adjust medications so we can know for sure how good a medicine is working for you. And so these are my references. Um, the, but, you know, it was really good to be here with you all today and, and give an overview of clinical trials. I hope it's something that you'll think about. I mean, you know, clinical trials um, definitely aren't for everybody, but for people who are um, continuing to have flare-ups, definitely something to think about and um, how, it, how it can help you in the future and help others down the road. So thanks again. I hope you all have a great day.